And so the lie that we tell young kids, and I hear it so often, it's so pervasive that you don't even think about it. You're perfect the way you are. Well, we know that's a lie. No one's perfect. And it's bad to tell people that they're perfect. You can accomplish anything if you believe in yourself. It teaches them to avoid one of life's most fulfilling endeavors, which is conquering self-doubt to achieve one's purpose or goal. So a couple of things I know we, we often talk about. Some more macro issues here in the, uh, in the close. This is one thing that I noticed in, in talking with um, younger relative, I will say. I don't want to, if I say niece, or if I say nephew, if I say cousin, then they're going to be like, it's me, and they're going to get mad, I have to talk with their parents. So I, I hear this a lot, though, particularly in children's shows, and you hear it on radio. We're constantly told, for as long as I can remember, certainly our entire upbringing, that the most important thing you can do is believe in yourself. Right? That's the mantra that we hear. And it's usually married with, you can accomplish, you can accomplish anything if you, just, if you just believe in yourself. It's, it's the most important thing is that you believe in yourself and then you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. All right, I'm here to tell you that neither of those statements are true. That's not a bad thing because you know what? It's okay. It's okay to be unsure of yourself. It's okay not to know. Now, it's not okay to let that overtake you to paralyze you, to prevent you from doing the work that has to be done anyway, but it is okay to be unsure of your abilities. Here's something else. Uh, you can still accomplish, by the way, great things without entirely believing in yourself. Sometimes your greatest accomplishments come in an environment, in an incubator of self-doubt. Now, notice I, don't, I didn't say self-defeat, so I don't want to say people are, are telling you to believe in yourself and you shouldn't believe in yourself at all. That's not what I'm saying. Doubt is a very different animal from defeat. Doubt is not a guarantee of failure. It's just a healthy skepticism of this notion that we're taught of a guaranteed victory. Because you know what doubting yourself does? Do you know what it does? Well, if, if you're a productive person, uh, a person who utilizes critical thinking, you're going to set out to determine whether that doubt is valid. See, absolute confidence, the believe in yourself, if you buy that wholesale, it breeds complacency. Healthy self-doubt breeds inquiry. It breeds vigilance. Also, something else. Self-doubt usually only enters into the equation when it's a decision of consequence, when it's an action worth deliberating. You don't tend to struggle with self-doubt when I, I, picking avocados out at the market. Like, was that one, was that one ripe enough? I, I think I better go back. Now, some of you, some of you may, okay, some, because you're OCD. So this segment is not for you. You should go touch every northern facing corner of your house right now while avoiding all the tile cracks, otherwise your family will die. But for the rest of us, that trepidation, that self-doubt, um, it, it only comes into play when we're nearing the perimeter of something that matters, especially if it's your purpose. And we've talked about this, talked about living in your purpose, talking about fulfilling your purpose, because everyone has something that they're great at. And so the lie that we tell young kids, and I hear it so often, it's so pervasive that you don't even think about it. You, some of us don't even think to go, well, hold on a second, is that true? Just like, you're perfect the way you are. Well, we know that's a lie. No one's perfect. And it's bad to tell people that they're perfect. You can accomplish anything if you believe in yourself. The most important thing is that you believe in yourself. The lie, and that's a lie that we tell young kids, uh, it teaches them to avoid one of life's most fulfilling endeavors, which is conquering self-doubt to achieve one's purpose or goal. And I wish I could say, you know, on a personal level, I wish I could say that I always believed in myself. Life would be a lot easier. It's not true. Constantly had self-doubts. I lack self-belief. Uh, I constantly have thought of myself as underqualified, undeserving, overwhelmed. I still do, by the way. I struggle with it every single day, but it doesn't stop me from doing what it is that I know needs to be done. There's no shame. We talk about this, this idea of shame and culture, but the problem is we want to praise the wrong things and remove shame from things that maybe should be shamed. There should be no shame and self-doubt. There's no virtue in absolute unfettered self-confidence. There's no shame and self-doubt whatsoever, just as there is no sin in fear. I'm going to go a little, bit, a little bit theological on you here. We've often heard, I had a pastor, I've talked about this, who, who once taught that fear is the opposite of love. That it's not hate, it's fear. To be fair, it might have been Rob Bell. I have no idea. Could be a heretic. <laughs> but we're taught this a lot, that you shouldn't fear. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. So let's, you, even if you don't believe, I'm a Christian, I make, make no bones about it, but uh, let's just say you think, it's a, you think it's an Aesop fable. Okay, Jesus was sinless, otherwise there's no point to the story. That's the whole idea behind the Christ. Have you ever read about Jesus in the garden before the crucifixion? He asked God if there was any other way, any other way for this to occur, to please let this cup pass from him. That was fear. But there wasn't another way. And so he took that hard path just the same. See, self-doubt, fear, how you feel 
It doesn't determine your actions, and your actions determine who you are. Your actions are what define you. I would even go as far as to say that the most, people with the most absolute self-confidence tend to be buffoons, and the greatest folks to have done anything in their chosen endeavor, they almost all have a healthy level of self-doubt. Do me a favor, actually. Let's, let's do this little thought exercise here. I want you to think of a historical figure who you really respect, you admire, even, even a great athlete. I just want you to picture someone in your mind, someone who's the greatest to have ever done X, okay? Take a second, pause if you have to. Do you have it? Okay. Now, I want you to go research that person. Find some interviews or find some candid writing about how they felt before some of their greatest accomplishments. It, Winston Churchill, could be Abe Lincoln, Marcus Aurelius, could be George St. Pierre, could be Richard Pryor. Every single one of them, without exception, struggled with self-doubt. Every single one of the greatest to have ever done X or Y or Z was nervous and struggled with self-doubt. They didn't walk on stage, whether it be the global stage, the comedy stage, or the arena, like some pink song who thinks that they were perfect the way they are and that they had absolute self-confidence. Now. On the flip side, think of the buffoons. Think of the people you don't necessarily have a ton of respect for. I, like the cast of Jersey Shore, C-level actors, the mediocre plus-size Instagram models, the guy you knew from high school who's still living in his senior year. Think of anyone who you, you wouldn't want to emulate. They tend, not all of them, they tend to be the people who have ultimate self-confidence and this unwavering self-belief. Doubt never even enters into the equation. Why is that? Who would you rather be? So the final exercise I want you to do this week, it's, it's just a mindful, it's just about being mindful. I want you to think about what it is that gives you self-doubt. What is it that you would like to accomplish, but maybe you're not sure if you can? Or maybe if you, if you can't think of it, um, I want you to be hyper-vigilant just throughout the entire week. Be as aware as you can, hyper-vigilant this entire week, uh, so that any situation that arises, as you approach it, and if you get that, when you get that little feeling, that voice in your head telling you, I don't, I don't know, I don't think you can do it, is that voice popping up because you're coming close to fulfilling your purpose? I want you to ask yourself, is that voice coming up because this is important, this is of consequence, this involves your life's potential? Have you been avoiding it because it might sting? You've been cutting that feeling, that voice, a wide swath, avoiding? I want you to be honest with yourself. Here's the, you don't have to believe in yourself, full stop. You don't. I think it's foolish to. Self-doubt is normal. It's healthy. You just don't have to let it batter you into self-defeat. And all of this starts with living in truth. Not your truth, the truth. Hey there, YouTube viewer, you know the drill. Just click one of these other videos in a box playing up here. And I mean, there's an actual box. I don't, of course, mean that in the feminine, sense. it's a slur, but that, of course, I don't mean box because men can have boxes too, and I don't mean to say box, I just, that men can, there's like a DC outlet and an AC outlet, and they can be either one that they choose depending on the electrical current or the charge of ions, I think.